Hello and welcome back to Let's Play Eastern Mind, The Lost Souls of Tong No. This time we'll be taking on the last of the nine lives of the game, Shah, the musician. And as you can see, Shah's head, and his entire body really, is modelled to vaguely look like different kinds of musical instruments. Music is very much the theme of his life. And as we are told here, there are four musical instruments, one to each world of the game, excluding the central mountain. And we're given the Bell of Gold right off the bat, the musical instrument associated with the Land of Desire, the Gold Land. So here we are in the Land of Desire, with the clue to merely go to our room, but there isn't really much to see in the Land of Desire. There's a couple of pillars that go to the Central Mountain and the Marketplace respectively, but this one pillar is the one that leads to our room. I think we're supposed to interpret this because the same music plays here as it did when we started Shah's life. And given the clue, play the instruments and all paths will reveal to us, we play our instrument, and the path to Shah's room opens, and here we will get some exposition. That didn't really tell us much of what we didn't already know, sadly. And, oh, did you catch that? That went by very quickly, so I'll do it again. A bug flies out from behind that pillar, which is your cue to realise that there's a room behind it, and you can just kind of pull the pillar aside. And this is a freaky room with mannequins in it. And these balls, when clicked on, inexplicably turn into dragons. Dragon balls, if you will. And if you point them at each other, as was hinted in a video in the Land of Dreaming, they turn into the Golden Flower. And the King of Desire likes gold, so we can use that golden flower to wake him up and talk to him. We don't actually need to talk to him, this was just a moment of confusion on my part, because I thought you needed to talk to him to trigger the appearance of the instruments in the world. It turns out, initially, you can either go to Shah's room, or talk to the King of Desire. One of the two. In both, it doesn't matter though. Though he does have something to say. Yep, he offers us money and gems. We are above your material needs, for we are Shah, the righteous musician. Let's get cracking then. First we'll go to the Land of Time, because it's the only place that actually has a direct warp to it from the Land of Desire, and is located very non-indicatively inside this mannequin. It's hinted at in a video in the Land of Dreaming, but I hope you have a good memory for this sort of thing. Now, as for actually locating the instruments in the various worlds, you're not given much direction. You're supposed to just kind of blunder around and find them eventually. But the one in the Land of Time is located in the tower. Three stories up, actually, so I'm going to tastefully fade to it. Once you locate a musical instrument, all you need to do is play another musical instrument to draw it out. Whoops, double-click the bell by mistake. Alright, and the next musical instrument we're going to go after is located in the Land of Life, and there is no convenient way to it from the Land of Time, so I will see you there. Now we need to go to the Land of Dreaming, and thankfully there is a pretty convenient way of going to there from the Land of Life. A simple warp, like that. 
Honestly, I'm not that big of a fan of Shah's Life, and it's mostly because of this sort of thing. Shah's Life is pretty much just one giant fetch quest where you have to go between all of the lands, and by this point in the game I've seen all of the content in it, so whatever. This life isn't anything special, but for some reason this riddle reset. I don't know why. If I play through the entire game in one sitting, they don't come back. They seem to just be based on whether or not it's the first time you've booted the game up that session. It's weird. And the instrument in the Land of Dreaming is located in this door, marked with our face on it. Now we need to return to the Land of Desire with the four instruments, and thankfully there is another quick way to get there from the Land of Dreaming, rather than tediously walking around the different zones. That's not this room though, this room seems to move places specifically to fuck with me, I'm convinced of it because I never get it right on the first try. But yes, Land of Desire Wall, it's located in that door. Very convenient, very nice. And this is actually where the paths diverge a bit. You can go to your room and place the four musical instruments like you were told to, or you can go to the King of Desire, and that pretty much has the same effect as going to your room. I opted to go to my room because I didn't actually know that you could just talk to the King of Desire at the time. And no, going to the King of Desire does not reward you with a gem or anything like that. He cheaps out at the last second. Miserly friggin' git. <laughs> And so Shah dies having listened to, to that pretty neat tune, actually. I think it's cool the way the instruments all come together to provide something cohesive. And our reward for completing his life is the little box of sound, an item which has absolutely no function outside of playing that song again. And that concludes the last of the nine lives which means we can return back to being Rin for the final stretch of the game. And initially we must go to the central mountain because we have all of the nine name tag things now that we can use to unseal the central mountain. And for those who are curious, if we die from this point onwards, nothing happens, we just respawn as Rin again. <laughs> And so begins the slightly tedious process of putting all of the nameplates in one by one. And baffling enough, the nameplates don't actually disappear from your inventory once used. I have no idea why that is. Only if all nine are used do they actually disappear. Confusing. But now we can advance up the stairs, and halfway up, there is that symbol that we've been seeing quite a lot around the game. Don't know who he is, but he's somewhat important, and whoever he is, he seems to be our friend. Yes, let's actually advance up the mountain and see what's actually been hiding, what needed to be stamp sealed this entire time. The octagonal shrine, apparently. And you can get in there through this somewhat barely visible window, as you can see up there. It doesn't even prompt a cursor change when you hover over it, so it's not that easy to see. And there's our Earth Megatama in the centre there. And here are the statues of the kings, who give us fairly rude words whenever we click on them. The kings aren't actually very nice people, as it turns out. But then again, I'm not sure what you'd expect from the rulers of a world that apparently eats souls for no particular reason. We cannot acquire the Earth Magatama at this point. We lack the necessary tools to get at it. And presently we're missing two of the four Magatamas associated with the other worlds besides this one. We got the Wood Magatama from the Land of Life and the Water Magatama from the Land of Dreaming. So we're missing the one from the Land of Time and the one from the Land of Desire. So first up, we're going to go to the Land of Time. 
Now, I already showed where the Magatama is in an earlier video, it's in the red candle off to the west of the tower, but before we can actually go there and pick up the pieces of our own soul, we need to ask the King for permission. Permission to pick up the pieces of our own soul. You'd think this would just be a thing you do, rather than ask permission for. Or do we need to ask for permission? I'm actually not sure. This conversation doesn't seem much like asking for permission, but I swear you need to talk to him before it will trigger. I can't actually remember now after having seen that conversation. It's not important at any rate, let's just go get it. And the last and final Magatama we need to gain is in the Land of Desire. So we follow up one hopping between all of the world's fetch quests with another. This game sort of runs out of ideas towards the end. Anyway, the Metal Magatama is actually quite interesting, I promise you. But first, we need to access it through the king, and no, he doesn't just simply give it to us, so we need to get the golden flower and wake him up with it. Like so. And he says he'll guide us to the Helix Palace. So yes, we get to go to an entirely new area contained within the Land of Desire. But first he gives us six gems to choose from. Each of these contains precisely one item that is of use in the Helix Palace. And I picked the shittiest one because I have the terrible luck. Let's get a move on with the Helix Palace. The Helix Palace is probably the most interesting area in the entire game. But sadly, you can't really show off most of it. In fact, any of it really on one playthrough. I'll be putting up a bonus video showing the different interactions you can have in this place, because they're dictated by the items you pick from the gem and you can only pick one, and I didn't feel like constant load back and forthing between this, it would probably get very jarring very quickly. Here's the first room in the Helix Palace, and another mystery presented to us about this game, because I have absolutely no idea how to get this thing open. I, I don't know. I couldn't figure it out, no walkthrough tells me. I've tried rubbing things against it in vain, but I can't find any sort of key or anything. This room baffles me with its mysteries that I don't understand, but it's also not relevant to completing the game, so let's move on to the next door up. The second room up is this seemingly empty room with nothing but a painting of a mouth on a wall. Doesn't seem to be much to do in here, really, so we're just gonna... An indication from behind. So we turn around and... nope, still nothing. Don't know why the indication business from behind... But it's still there, so there's got to be something going on in this room, right? So how does this work? How do we trigger it? What you do is you click on the mouth in the back, and then this happens. It turns out this is the Room of Appetite. And that mouth is gobbling on all that very tasty for 1994 3D graphics looking food. If only we'd bring our chopsticks, then we could participate in this. The chopsticks are an item you get from the gems. We don't have it, so we can't do this. One for the bonus video, as it were. So let's move on to the next door up. And this room. This room is very special indeed, and I in fact don't actually want to show it right now. That's something I definitely want to say for the bonus video. It does something very, very weird and unconventional, to the point where I actually can't show it off in the midst of a normal playthrough because it will fuck everything up. It does very interesting things to the game. And this room. Oh boy. Not safe for work warning. Throwing that right out there. We need to enter our age here, but it doesn't actually seem to work because I can put in things like one and nothing happens. But yeah, seriously, not safe for work warning. Get out right now if you're not into this. This is the room of sexual desire. That thing in the middle looks very phallic. I don't like where this is going. And this here back wall contains a... Uh... Right! Those! And we can shake them! Why can we shake them? And this thing just makes... Ugh, I don't like this at all. This is very strange. And that's a pair of legs. Why is there a pair of legs? This is the point where my mind just can't take this anymore. That's so fucking weird. I want no more to do with this. I'm out. Christ almighty. Let's just move right along to the next room up, shall we? And here we are already. And this room, sadly, we can't do anything with it. There's pillars held up with glass bottles, but we don't have the necessary item to actually interact with this. It's from one of the six gems at the beginning. 
This place is very annoying, I can't actually show any of the cool interactions in it on the main video because I'd have to load back and forth. Very frustrating, really. And at least we have reached the top of the Helix Palace, and here the Metal Magatama is just floating open and free. No fuss, no muss. Just pick it up. Excellent, and nothing to the left here, but if we turn to the right, there's this guy, a member of the Among family. And he will apparently play a gambling game with us if we pay him with the necessary item. I don't know what that item is, I never found it. This is one of those things that won't be in the bonus video because I have no idea how to trigger it. It's another one of those mysteries about this game. It's probably not that interesting anyway if it's not necessary to complete the game. And this here Fangshin gives us a hint that Mokugyo has an allergy to ants. A clue that would have been relevant several hours earlier. Oh well. We're done now. We've collected all the Magatamas. All we need to do now is go back to the Central Mountain. I'll see you there. Nope, we're not done yet. We lack the power, so we must grant a Katana Gem. Yes, we're going to be building a sword out of the fundamental forces. Isn't that delightful? So he gives us the Force of Earth, and sadly, we need to find his sign in every single zone of the game. That entails running back and forth through all of the worlds again. You see what I mean when I say I said this game starts running out of ideas towards the end? Because now we just need to ferry our asses back and forth from his location in all of the worlds. Very annoying, and it has to be done in a specific order as well, and that order is the least convenient thing in the world. First we need to go to the Land of Desire. I really hate this ending fetch quest, Malaki. It is such a lame-ass final challenge before the ending. Boo. Bad Eastern Mind. Now we need to go to the Land of Dreaming, a location that is not quick to get to from the Land of Desire at all. This entire ending quest seems to be set up to frustrate efficiency freaks like me. And at the very least, the game has the good grace to place the next gem in the Land of Life, a location that is easy to get to from the Land of Dreaming, just so as to not completely bring my blood to a boil, and the warp is... Not in that room. I swear something is wrong with the perspective on the Land of Dreaming because I never get the doors right on the first try. Just never. Never happens. Anyway, let's go get that gem. Alternatively, something interesting could actually happen on the way. Another member of the Among family. He does nothing more than warn us of potential thieves and then leave. What a nice fellow. Very odd, and at this point I realise I actually have the little box of sound. Let's give it a try. I think that tune goes on for a little bit too long, actually. And here's where the other side is located, the Force of Wood. And that means the last force is located in the Land of Time, which fortunately can be conveniently gotten to from the Land of Life, albeit not anywhere near where the sign is placed. Let's just jump straight to it and collect the final gem. We've seen all of the content this game has to offer now, so this end questing is just pointless faffing around for no reason other than to pad the playtime out. And that is thankfully the last time I have to cut out stupid, pointless wandering from this game. I really dislike this ending sequence, it is such a letdown. This, however, is not a letdown. We get a giant sword. I like this part a lot because I get to swing sharp objects around. Admittedly, as far as swords go, it's kind of underwhelming for having apparently been charged up with a bunch of fancy gems, but I'll take what I can get at this point. And this is more or less it for Rin's story. All we need to do now is reclaim the final piece of our soul, so I will shushy and let the ending sequence play out.
finally Togyo makes his appearance. This is the same Togyo from the puzzle I complained about a video or two back. Keep that in mind. So the other kings tore Togyo into eight pieces. That's where the eyeballs of dreaming come from, the both of them. They're both of his eyes, which is actually really gross when I think about it. So that's how you'd know that the original owner of the eyeballs is him. But I don't know how you'd know that when the puzzle is presented to you. It's very strange. So it is over, the LP has concluded, it, except it doesn't, because in Tongno there is no end. And the ending talks about something called the Chu Teng, which refers to the sequel to this game, I said this earlier. Chu Teng is actually referred to in the Tongno book, in the Tongno myth section, where it says after a certain number of souls have been purified and a whole bunch of other bullshit, that the entire island will just shoot off into outer space. And yes, Chu Teng does in fact take place in outer space. It can only get crazier from here, and the journey will never come to an end. But this LP's journey has come to an end. Thank you for watching this LP, I hope you enjoyed it. I'll leave you now with the credits. Goodbye. Sticking around after the credits, you get to know that this here bit of text says Tong now sleeps. A fitting conclusion, I think. Goodbye for real this time. <laughs>